Hello students, it's me, Mr. Weaver. Today, as you can see on the screen, I am going to go over some information about Lord of the Flies. So, Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I want to go over some things that I think are going to be helpful to you. First of all, as you can see in this first slide, William Golding wrote it. He was a British novelist who was born in 1911. If you know much about history, you'll know that there was a world war that happened a few years later, starting around 1917. At least that's when we got into it. So he would have definitely been influenced by that war as a child. He studied science and English at Oxford. He fought in the Royal Navy in 2000, I'm sorry, in World War II. And he was actually in uh, the invasion of Normandy on D-Day, which is quite an eventful uh, moment in the history of the world, not just Great Britain. At the end of the war, he went back to teaching and writing at Oxford, and he earned the Nobel Prize in Literature for Lord of the Flies. So that's what we know about him with a brief survey. What about the world around him? Well, World War II was pretty monumental for the entire world, and it, of course, was in William Golding's life. He watched France fall to Nazi Germany in 1940, and Great Britain was really afraid of an invasion into the country. It was being bombed nightly by Nazi planes. Uh, London, a lot of it was in rubble, and so Great Britain feared, especially for their own children, which is why you have stories like Narnia, uh, where children are going out to the countryside to get away from the war. In 1940, there is documented a German U-boat torpedoing a British ship that was carrying children, trying to get them out, and it went down. There was this evacuation program to get the kids out, which will be very important when you read Lord of the Flies, because it's a plane full of children leaving a war. Here are some events from World War II for your viewing pleasure. Feel free to pause and look at it. I'm not going to go over everything. That's for history class, but maybe just a reminder of the events of the war that would have impacted William Golding. When asked about writing Lord of the Flies, William Golding said, it was simply what seemed sensible for me to write after the war. When everyone was thanking God they weren't Nazis, I'd, been en I'd seen enough to realize that every single one of us could be Nazis. Ladies and gentlemen, that is quite a controversial statement, obviously, coming from a Brit uh, right after a war when the Nazis were destroying Great Britain and most of Europe. So the question is, how could he make this statement? What is he stay saying about human beings by making the statement? Well, before we get to that, let's think about what inspired him to even write Lord of the Flies. Uh, one time he allowed his class total freedom in a debate, and it pretty soon got out of control as it went from verbal jousting to uh, students threatening real violence. Of course, he had the experience of being in war. And William Golding is also responding to a book called Coral Island, in which a group of boys land on an island that has a lot of evil on the island, and the goodness of the boys overcome the evil. William, Golden didn't, William Golding didn't see human beings being like that at all, in their humanity. So he wrote something that was the opposite. It's a good island that is invaded by boys who bring the evil to the island. And we'll be talking about that in class. Of course, William Golding also had questions, philosophical questions, that inspired him to write the novel. He had some philosophical influences as well. Thomas Hobbes, who was an English philosopher, um, said a lot of things. This is very general, okay? You'd have to actually read him. But the man is, uh, by nature, selfishly individualistic. We're selfish. We're at war with other men because we are selfish. We have a lot of fear of violent death because we see the selfishness in, in others, and we are prone to our own violence. And that is what motivates people to create civilizations, to avoid the individual violence. So we need to be controlled by some kind of sovereignty over our brutish, violent nature and behavior. So this is part of Thomas Hobbes' philosophy. All of that, of course, is going to influence the context of the novel Lord of the Flies and what happens. Some facts about the novel itself. It was rejected 21 times before it was published. 
It was first published in uh, 54, but it was not really successful until the 60s, and it's often challenged because of some of the content, which I won't go into. Here's the synopsis of what happens. It's, it's mid-unknown time. I shouldn't put the word mid there. It's in an unknown time when Europe is engulfed in a war. Now, some people assume it's World War II, but we're not actually told it's during World War II. We just know that there is a war going on. It certainly parallels World War II. There's a plane carrying British schoolboys mistaken for an aircraft and shot down onto a deserted island, and only the boys survive the crash. So they try to form a society to govern themselves. That is what happens in the story. Golding says this is his message. The theme, or message, is an attempt to trace the defects, that's the bad stuff, of a society back to the, be the defects, or bad stuff, the sin of human nature. In other words, the evil comes from the humans, not from something outside of it. So the fact that society has evil in it doesn't come because of the structure of the society, but because of the evil in the hearts of the people. That's his message. Here are some topical things you're going to see. Um, survival is very important in the story. How do they survive? There's a lot of... Um, vying for power and leadership on the island from different characters. Uh, there's this idea of civilization versus savage, savagery. You're going to see an attempt at civilization and a slide into savagery. There's a loss of innocence from the boys when they arrive on the island, especially the young ones. There's just a wrestling with human nature that man is dualistic. He has these evil and these good things inside of him. That there is this uh, question of what makes a human a human? Is it the nature of who he is, or is it something nurtured in him? And then finally, just good versus evil in human beings and outside of human beings. There's lots of allusions. These are references to things in history or in literature. There's a reference to Coral Island, which is that book I was talking about. Uh, there's um, allusions to the Bible, several of them. This is written in the early 20th century when biblical allusions would have been expected uh, from a good writer. Uh, you have Simon called Peter um, in the Bible, and we have a character named Simon who has a lot of uh, very righteous things about him. <clears throat> there's, of course, uh, a boy named Peter in Coral Island, so there's a, an allusion to that. They even mention Coral Island and Treasure Island, and there's other numerous biblical allusions throughout, things like snakes, garden-like settings, etc. Golding's literary techniques are pretty strong in symbolism. There's a lot of irony and the opposite of what you would expect, situational, verbal. Uh, there's an abundant imagery and sensory detail throughout. You are going to sense the heat on the island and sense the sights and the smells. And then there's a lot of figurative language, similes, metaphors, personification. Golding uses these things to bring us into the island, to set the mood and the tone, and to enhance some of the themes through the conflict in the plot. Lord of the Flies has been used in lots of pop culture. You can pause here and look at these if you want. And here. I, and here. Even musicians use it. So um, I hope this has been helpful in you understanding some of the context as we begin our look into this wonderful um, novel called Lord of the Flies. Very influential, very powerful. And uh, I hope you get a lot out of it. Have a great day.